When I think over the top bloodshed in video games, nothing quite comes to mind like Gears of War, a series of brutality since 2007. But the one question that must be asked for the future of the Gears of War franchise is, has this series ran its course over the past 12 years, or does this chainsaw still rev? Let's start by saying this game sounds and looks gorgeous. I mean, at some points, I felt like I was walking into a twisted Bob Ross painting that was brought to life by Sam Raimi. Shoot, let's get crazy. Almost as bad as you. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Die, fascists! Die! Somehow. Come on. We still gotta reach the tower. This sound mixing deserves some award. I mean, did you hear that ice? It sounded better than opening a glass bottle of Coke. But seriously, this game's audio and visuals are a stunning achievement, and not to mention also this game runs 4K, 60 frames per second, with little to no frame drops. It all just mixes together beautifully. <laughs> Gears of War has always been about aberrant violence, and this one makes no exception, but that's not the only thing that this game will not make an exception for. Gears has always had a fun flow of gameplay over the years, trying new things out with each installment, hoping to push the boundaries in the Gears world, but never do they let that make up for a bad story. The Coalition came into this series in 2016 with good intentions to balance both of these key factors, and balance has been done once again. You play as Kate in this Gears story. Kate marks the first playable female character as the main lead in the Gears series, and this is a good thing for us because when it comes to it, Kate will whoop some ass. If you remember from Gears of War 4, Kate receives an amulet from her mother. The camera then allows us to see the back of it, which reveals to be the Locust Queen's amulet. And this sparks our interest and makes us think, what the hell is going on here? This is where Gears 5 picks up. Kate has been having visions of the swarm tearing people apart as well as visions of her mother. You're set out to find what connects you to this amulet, why are these visions happening, and how can they be stopped? I won't say much, but watching Kate react to these visions, that's character building 101. This campaign takes many twists and turns, so if I were you, I'd buckle up, cause this is gonna be one long ride. Ever hear of the Metro series? If you haven't, then this won't exactly make sense, but Gears took the same turn in gameplay that Metro did in Metro Exodus. They give you a skiff and then they drop you off on a new map to explore. The area is made up of small side missions that reward you with an upgrade for Jack. But not just any small rewards though. I mean these rewards change up the tactics in the game. What used to be a hassle sneaking up on enemies is now a piece of cake with the cloak and that's one of many upgrades. This is one of the game's savings grace because after 12 years of the same gameplay flow, you have to change up something to keep the gamers coming back. And you never know what's going to be around any corner. Could be a hefty boom shot, or it just might be a carrier. What the hell is that? Something this Gears does is something I've always wanted in tons of games, and that's a health bar over your bigger, more powerful enemies that aren't bosses. I mean, sometimes you're putting clips upon clips of ammo in enemies, and all while scratching the old chrome dome thinking to yourself, this shit can't be real. Gears gives the assurance that the enemy is dying, might take about 420 rounds, but we promise it's dying. You're gonna die, clowns! This brings me to one more thing some of you might see as an issue, others might not mind as much. This Gears is more scarce about ammo than others. 420 rounds might seem like a lot in a Lancer, but until you take on a whole swarm, yeah, that's not a lot of ammo. You're going to have to pick up enemy weapons very often, so you're going to be using all different types of weapons throughout the game, not just Lancers. I mean, I think I used every gun in this game about three times. And like I said, 
this issue is kind of split 50-50. Some of you might see it as an issue and others aren't going to mind. I personally did not mind this one bit. I actually enjoy getting to know every weapon in the game. Through all the fun I had in this campaign, there were some issues here. One of them being another freaking audio bug. This one would either clear up between 5 minutes to 10 minutes, or you would have to exit the game menu then start back at the checkpoint. And to clarify, it normally happened when I joined in on someone or after a loading screen that took you into the next chapter. Alright, so here's some of the other bugs. Your character not being able to walk or run without them twitching everywhere. Unable to use one of your weapons. So in your weapon wheel, for me, most of the time was my left weapon on the weapon wheel. I'd have to drop it and pick up another weapon. The next bug, the camera would break from the characters, allowing you to still move the character, but not the camera. As if suddenly this game wanted to be Resident Evil. What was that? Now these are the bugs I experienced in the campaign. The multiplayer, now that's a different story, but we'll get to that. Overall, this campaign was beautiful. It had its bugs, yes, but every game does. Now, yes, I never experienced this bad of bugs and gears, but I also had the special edition, so I got to play four days early. So that explains quite a bit of it. Now, I won't spend much time on multiplayer, because frankly, there's not a lot to say. PvP has always been PvP. If you've played any Gears PvP, then you've played this one. Nasher's out, and every other gun doesn't matter. There is one bug I had in multiplayer, though, and this one's worth being frustrated over. So this game does supply drops. You get the supply drops from getting XP. But that's kind of hard when your XP doesn't show up at the end results. Yep, there was a bug where your XP would not count and you couldn't level up or get any supply drops. Horde mode was the same as Gears 4, but this time I'm only allowed to pick weapons that are connected to the character. So easy fix, right? Kill an enemy, take their weapon. No. You can only buy ammo for the character specific gun from the fabricator. And have fun splitting the ammo boxes among five people. What I really want to talk about is Escape, the brand new mode brought to us in Gears 5. So far this mode has three total maps. This is a game mode where you're captured by a snatcher, taken to a hive, and your goal is to destroy it using poison gas. You start with a pistol and you must gather weapons from dead enemies or supply rooms. But hurry up, because the gas is going to fill up the entire map, so if you're searching for too long, it will kill you. This mode, as well as Horde, features skills. My favorite skill is also a new feature in the game. Pressing B allows a melee attack with a knife. My special allowed me to do 20% more damage, as well as knife continuously until the skill meter ran out. Now this was my preferred mode over Horde and PvP. Do I wish the maps were bigger? Yes. Will I complain about it? Nah. Give them props for adding a new feature, and one I absolutely loved at that. So this brings it all together. Gears 5 was a milestone set back by some bugs. The story was the best one yet, as well as the visuals and audio were a treat to listen to as well as see. This game will also be updated every three months, so the dedication that the Coalition has for this game, it's serious and they're here to stay. This game is priced at $60, and I'm comfortable at saying this game is worth $55. The continuous maintenance on this game has a promising horizon for the game's future, and I look forward to seeing it in action down the road. I'm reloading! Throwing shock! Throwing shock! Ready to front line! I appreciate everyone's support, and I hope to see everybody back here for another review or preview. Next up, though, Borderlands.